Hi, my name's Sean McLaughlin. I'm the CEO of Airframes Alaska, and we're here to tell you about a little special deal we're going to have going for the Great Alaskan Aviation Gathering. Here with Travis, who's our tire inspector, and Dan, who's our lead engineer in making Alaskan bush wheels. You guys want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of a background, we make how many tires a week? 50 or so, right? About 50, yeah. We make about 50 tires a week. Alaskan bush wheels are still a lot of science, but a lot of art as well. We have, they're all hand built and then handcrafted here from straight rubber. Travis here is the guy who does all the inspections of our bush wheels before they go out. And he's tough, he's tough, he's a tough grader. Um, how are we doing today? Are we making good tires today? Or making good tires. Making good tires today, okay. Now if Travis decides he doesn't like a tire, he's gonna mark it. He's gonna mark it for engineering review, and Dan's gonna get it, and Dan's gonna decide, is this tire gonna be okay? Is it a blem, which means it has a cosmetic detail of some sort, or is it a reject? So, with that in mind, we're gonna show you what we're gonna do for the aviation show. Thanks, Travis. All right, Dan, follow me. All right, so this is our blem rack. Now, because of COVID, we haven't let people in the factory, generally speaking, what we do with blems, I'm gonna have Dan tell you more about blems here in a second, is we sell the blems in the local market so that people can look at the tire they're buying before they buy it, and we give them a discount. We don't wanna take a tire that's a blem and send it out to someone in the lower 48 and have them go, what the heck, you know, what's this tire you sent me? So Dan, tell us what creates a blem. And I'm going to hold the mic for you. Go ahead. Okay. So when we're evaluating our tires, we are very picky about what, what we're going to reject, what we're not going to let out of the building at all, and what's going to be good to go. And blemps fall somewhere in the middle. So we stay strictly to cosmetic issues, for instance, small cracks or um, perhaps a just a little spot that didn't fully look nice, um, but there's nothing structurally wrong. Structurally, structurally, they're just as good as any of our regular tires. It's just they have a small issue that someone would probably bring up if they paid full price. If they paid full price, right. Yeah. And what do, what do the Bush guys around here always say? They say what, the first time you fly, a set of tires. You fly it once and then it's already blemished. <laughs> it's already blemished. So, so if, if you're doing your work right, right? If you're doing work right. Yeah. So usually we have people come in here and they just want to look at them. They want to be sure that they're n there's nothing unexpected. Like if you're buying something used off the internet, you want to see pictures of every little part. Exactly. So if they can come in and see it and put their hands on it and I can talk to them and explain, them to, explain to them why it's a blemish, what the blemish is, and that it's not really affecting anything, then they like that a lot better. Good. rather than sending them out and them not really knowing why or what the story is. Perfect. So so we look at this, the Blem sales, sort of as a service to our local market and the pioneer bush uh, pilots of Alaska. There's a lot going on around me here. But so we like, we actually like selling these at discounts. So what we're doing this year at the Aviation Show, the Aviation Show happens to be right next to our Palmer campus where we build these tires. So if you're coming here for the Aviation Show and you want to come over and stop at our campus, we will be open. And and on a first come first serve basis, we're offering this new set of blems, which you can see how many we have. It's front and back. Quite a few actually for us, given, you know, because of the year last year. They're 20% off of our list price, and you can come through here, look at them, and purchase them on either Saturday or Sunday of the trade of the trade show. Um, so again, 20% off, first come, first serve, and we're gonna have these laid out so you can review them. And Dan, you're probably gonna be here to answer any questions, right? Yep. I'll okay. So that's the first start of it, the blem. Now if a tire really isn't going to work for it has one of our critical problems on it then it is a reject a reject and i as a ceo hate rejects of course but recently we've made some pretty cool things from rejects including a nice coffee table which we're getting i think you, some of you might have seen on social media but we're getting a lot of interest actually in this coffee table we made a, a run of five and they're gone um, we made those from rejects. So for those of you who thought that that was just a really the world's most expensive coffee table, it actually was made from uh, parts that we had to reject for one reason or another, including the, uh, the wheel in it and the tire. So let's go over there for a second and we're gonna give you a sense of that. So now this is called a quarantine area and everything that we uh, are rejecting ends up behind this yellow line in this corner and it's a, everything in here gets rejected. And once it comes in here, the tire is already 
you know, formally not going to be sold, uh, and then it gets actually drilled so that it can't be put into production and the serial number gets removed from it. So people have expressed some interest in um, using these tires to kind of create cool bush wheel type art or furniture. So also at the trade show, these will be available for anywhere from 20 bucks to 40, 40 bucks? 20 to 40 bucks, depending on size and blem, um, available for sale as well. So if some of you have this great idea or want to build your own table, these will also be available at our campus during the trade show. And Dan, tell people a little bit about what rejects attire. And you can use some examples sure. if you want. Okay. Well, for instance, this one, um, there's a split in the sidewall. So it's, most people probably wouldn't notice unless you look at tires every day. But it's, this one's particularly deep, so we suspect it could potentially delaminate while it's operating, which is unacceptable. Right. So we don't let that one out. And this one's pre-trim, right, that, Dan? That's why yes. it has the this hair is, on it? This yeah. is how it comes out of the mold. So we trim all this off before we send it out. Okay, give us some other examples. Okay. You can see how many we have here. Now, the reason it's so messy in here, Dan, sorry, one second, yeah. is that we've been running through this pile to decide to do this today, so we've been kind of rummaging around. Some tires we keep because we're doing research on, so we're pulling those out because some of them we just want to have our have Dan, the engineer, look at some more. But, but Dan, give us some more examples. Here's one. This one has a bubble in the sidewall. So oh, yeah. Um, there oh, was yeah. some contamination during the build process, so... During cook, there it didn't laminate completely on the inside. So when you inflate this, it looks like a bubble. So I would almost call it a tire zit. Yeah, that'd tire be zit. accurate. Yeah, that'd be tire accurate. Zit. Okay, so uh, that one we can't sell, obviously. That one can't sell. Yeah. So is there any other interesting details? Um, <laughs> this one's kind of interesting. So we actually oh, have wow. a problem on the tire. Press. No one's, This one you can get for two dollars. <laughs> actually, I'll pay you to take this one. So Dan, what happened here? So we had a val uh, pneumatic solenoid air valve fail on the tire press during cooking. So like this side looks lovely. Yeah. Um, but the, the valve stuck, so it dumped all the air during the cook cycle for about 30 minutes. So, so this side, cook that's why side. it looks like smeared and half cooked. So it would look like this on both sides if you cooked it without air pressure in it. Yeah, just tell me. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm not, take off, again, not, you're taking off your FAA, you know, engineering hat. Yeah. Would this tire still work? Yeah. I'm, it I'm probably sure would. It would probably hold air. It's just so ugly. You just don't want to do it. Super ugly. Yeah. Because it's, it's just ugly. Yeah. So we can't sell that. But so. operation-wise, it's most so, likely still going to. So if they wanted to make a bush wheel table, they could buy this. Side. They could use this side. Two right. bucks. <laughs> two bucks. Two, I pay you two bucks, two bucks. for this tire. Perfect. We're going to have to mark this tire now that Can't I spoke up. Can't beat yeah. that. <laughs> All right. Any other interesting ones in here? Um, this is interesting. So this is what one of our tires looks like before it's cooked. Uh, oh, sorry. Here, go, go, I'll hold it up. Here you go. So this one, there was a delamination on the rubber here. So you can see this is what some of our cording looks like before it's cooked. Well, that's this is, good. Yeah, this is the, the nylon here, and this is a heavy tread. See how thick the tread is? So when the rubber delaminates like this, it can lead to it can lead to sidewall bubbles, it can lead to splits right here, it can lead to several issues. So we recognized this early on, so we didn't even bother cooking this tire. Usually there's another ply that goes on both sides, and then we, we dust it and cook the whole thing, but we, we uh, pulled the ripcord on this one and didn't waste our cook didn't time. Didn't waste any cook time yep. on it. And um, this is a special product that's made by another manufacturer, right? So in this case, it was a product defect from another supplier. Yep, defective materials. Defective materials. So, so you've got an equipment, you've got an equipment, a process, yep. and a materials failure. Yep. That's frankly, guys, that's why the bush wheels are so expensive. Um, we most of the things we're procuring to make these were the were the only customer for it. Mm -hmm. uh, very limited supply chain, and of course our standards are super super high. So we do end up lemming and rejecting a good number of tires. Mm -hmm. So anyway, if you're interested in any of this stuff during the trade show, we're going to be at the trade show in force. We've got two booths there. We're going to be hanging around the uh, raffle cub. Um, we're going to have a lot of our engineering projects there for you to see. But in addition, if you come to this campus, just another 
couple hundred yards down the road, uh, we're going to have all these, 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 these products for sale that you can kind of rummage through. We'll also have some other cool stuff here. You can come for a factory tour while you're here. And you can also um, look at all of our tent and sled products, which will be all set up outside. And if you've got little kids and they want to run around in and out of tents, pretty much no better place to be during the weekend. So if you want to make a second stop, please do. And again, Dan Engineering Tires and Sean CEO, thanks for your time.